I think we can get started now. Okay, assalamu alaikum everyone. Welcome to our Ramadan program. My name is Sabria, I'm Sisiri Bus Assistant. And if you need help with anything, just reach out to me and I'll try to help. So as some of you know, uh, this Ramadan for this program, we've partnered with uh, Parenting with Allah by my side. And from that organization, we have Hiram and Sarah here. They're both very uh, passionate educators. Uh, Sarah has found Love Learning online, and this platform aim to, aims to help parents find qualified teachers for their kids. And uh, she has over 16 years of experience, and we're very happy to have her here. We have Iram as well. She's also a very passionate educator. She has founded uh, Parenting Uncomplicated, and she aims to help kids become the best version of themselves, as well as the mothers, help the mothers who reach out to her. Uh, the, uh, theme, uh, the theme for today is that we're going to talk about uh, parenting and how to parent like unviolently. So yeah, I think the biggest qualification of them is not, I mean, of course, all the qualifications they have, but the fact is that, uh, that they are mothers like you as well. So I think they understand you, what you're going through. The scene is for you, Iram, sorry, you can start. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Jazakallah khair to everybody joining in, signing in from all around the world. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you all and grant barakah in your time and your lives and your families. Today's topic, Sister Sarah and I, that we will be discussing inshallah is non-violent solutions. What is violence in parenting? Uh, Sister Sarah, would you like to throw some examples? What, what does it what does it ring a bell as what is violence what, what is violence um in well, okay assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh everybody um so sister Sarah and i are here today to talk about the non-violent solutions so she's asked me to uh define violence so i guess mostly i would, I would um i would actually put into that uh yelling shouting at your children um, forcing them to do things that they might not want to do, uh, coercing them, uh, you know, um, what else? Uh, obviously, violence in its, you know, in itself, hitting them, that's also violent, obviously. But we want to talk about all the different ways that, you know, you can affect your children and affect their future lives by uh, your behavior towards them, inshallah. Yeah. Inshallah. Jazakallah khair uh, for saying that uh, base of understanding what violence is and what it shouldn't be. Um, the new definition of violence, according to Marshall Rosenberg, who grew in a Detroit neighborhood and has initiated peace programs in areas such as Rwanda, the Middle East and Northern Ireland. He describes everyday violent behaviors as reward and punishment. Have you ever thought about that? Punishment is the root of violence on our planet. That's what he says. Guilt. When we trick others into thinking that they're responsible for our feelings. Now you're really making me angry, which we mothers usually say you're making mama mad now, right? Number three, shame, where we label when they don't do what we want. You're so rude. You're but the <laughs> denying responsibility for our actions using I had to do this because you were not listening to me. You should have known that I'm going to punish you because I told you once or you must or you ought. So all of these are basically languages or actions that are violent when it comes into our parenting. Now, I want to say that it's not that um, we want to do these things. It's like how our systems have been when we were colonized, how or how we have been through generational trauma uh, trained to do and use this sort of language. This is one of the reasons why it is very difficult for us mothers specifically and fathers to understand that, well, this is the way we were raised. And the, the most common question or the most common uh, feedback that you hear when we are teaching nonviolent solutions in parenting or peaceful parenting or sunnah parenting as parenting with Allah by my side usually says it, that this is that this is not from the sunnah. Shaming, blaming, uh, you know, um, lashing out is not from the sunnah. Sorry, would you like to add something? 
Yeah, um, in, you know, just adding to that, that it's not from the Sunnah, okay? In the Quran, they, we are told that Muslims have a duty to remove injustice and bring justice to the different aspects of your life, right? So if you're talking about justice, it doesn't mean that, you know, your child, uh, you telling your child off is is a just, you know, is justice for you. We're talking about the just for your child. Is that fair for them to be, because you're bigger than them, taller than them? Uh, I don't know if you guys have seen Matilda, but, you know, because I'm yeah. big, you're small, right? Okay, I know what I'm doing. You don't know. I'm the parent, you're the child, right? We have this, um, as we've been growing up, we have this, theory of ourselves being like we're the parent now we're the adult so this um what we do uh, like we said in parenting with alabama side is teach on the teachings of islam as much as we can inshallah and islam invites people to live a peaceful life based on theism justice and purity so peace in islam if you hear anybody talk about you know oh the islamists are like this, they're extreme they're and so on and so on but every Everybody turns around and says, but Islam is a peaceful religion. Islam is a religion of coexistence, not conflict. Uh, Islam is a religion of, you know, um, again, non-violent people, right? So if that's the case for people outside of the home, then why not inside the home? So this is what we would like to promote. This is what we would like to think about. Well, if everybody keeps on saying Islam is a peaceful religion, then why are so many of us shouting at our children? That shouldn't be, it's, that's not Islamic, right? It doesn't fit in. What do you think, Sistera? Mm, absolutely, absolutely. So I want to, start by saying that this does not mean that our feelings should be denied now as a mother for now alhamdulillah 16 years and sorry mashallah last 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 life she said mashallah her parenting has been 18 years so alhamdulillah as mature parents still learning <laughs> entering the next phases of our parenthood alhamdulillah may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brits everyone's child and everybody's children i mean with afia and best of health best of iman I mean, um, I want to say this, I want to say this because this is how I learned and maybe uh, by sharing that how how failed <laughs> we have been while trying to while trying to understand how to be our best, uh, inshallah, it, it will resonate. So what I learned was like, it's not that you suppress because suppression is what have caused us to lash out right in our schooling systems or in our systems where they were like just keep quiet whatever your need is keep quiet yesterday no day before yesterday i was um i was at the masjid and there was this two and a half three year old and she could not hold herself she was uh hysterical crying there were no tears in her eyes but she kept on saying mama 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 and her mom was trying to remove her shoes and her mom was trying to take her up the stairs to the masjid and her mom was trying and and and, and the mom was so angry and i could understand because i've been there the mom was so angry she just kept quiet a alhamdulillah that she was at the masjid otherwise i know if that kid was at home with the mother i <laughs> may Allah have mercy on that kid <laughs> and uh, but but how does a mother at that point bring in empathy to ask the child, the two-year-old, what is wrong with you? It's, does the child need to be held? Does the child not want the mother to go to the masjid? It was raining outside, it was cold. Let me say this, it was cold and it was raining outside and it was time for salah, right? And the mother came to the masjid probably for the sole reason that she's going to pray in the masjid and this two and a half, three-year-old has decided that she is going to bring in havoc like by by doing what she was doing does the child know what she's doing no does the mother know what the child is doing probably she has no idea what what she was fine just two seconds ago she was fine as soon as we we're entering the masjid this child is like going crazy what's wrong with the child and all of these situations cause us to trigger now what i'm trying to say is i'm saying that this does not mean that we uh, diminish or we suppress our feelings because suppressing means that in the moment maybe you're able to not lash out but as soon as you do not think of it another trigger is going to cause you to lash out so when thoughts are disguised as feelings we say i feel abandoned abused attacked let down manipulated rejected unappreciated unsupported that's what we mothers usually feel 
right? When when we do not understand why our child is doing what she's doing or he's doing, or when another parent or our spouse tells us that we're not doing a good enough job or somebody else around us says, or looks at us with a judgment, these are the feelings that we start to feel. So this adds onto the fuel. and But these are just interpretations. What we need to understand is, is this thought my truth? Maybe for me it is, but is it the truth? No, it is not. And to to switch our mindset or to switch our thought process from I am dejected, I'm 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 being I'm the victim here, from changing it from there to what is actually happening? What am I actually feeling? Yes, I'm feeling emotional, yes, I'm feeling angry, yes, I'm feeling, but why am I feeling this? Because I don't know how to handle my situation and that is okay. And that is okay. If I do not know how to handle, it is okay, I'm only human. So we give ourselves the empathy first, right? As mothers, it is considered that you have to jump into the fire without thought process. But the, proce- the, the problem is, the, what, do I, what I mean by fire is into the emotional drama that's happening with our child. So as a mother, like, I'm gonna protect my child, or I'm gonna fix the situation, or I'm gonna do this now. But if you are not a good, if you are not shielded properly, you're probably going to burn even more than you're trying to save. Do you understand that? So what you need to say is, I feel that it's time for me to breathe. Or a'uz billahi min ash-shaytan rajeem. In my earlier parenting days, when I learned, say a'uz billahi min ash-shaytan rajeem so that you can kill the shaytan that's causing you this. Uh, my a'uz billahi min ash-shaytan rajeem was like I was yelling. And I don't know who I was yelling at, at myself or at the shaytan or at my kids or all three of us, but my a'uz billahi min ash my kids were like, like, Ma, just, this is not helping either of us. And, and, and subhanAllah. The feelings, uh, in comparison, we can tell how we feel or guess how they feel using pure language of feeling. So what, what is the solution? The solution is your two-year or three-year-old is not going to understand. I feel, I feel like I'm the victim here. They're not going to understand, right? But your 12-year-old is going to understand. So you, you, so according to the age of your child and according to how you are, have communicated with your child or what kind of a bond you have with your child, you need to learn to be able to listen to the child and be able to communicate to the child. So for the older children or the moms who have older children, six, seven and up, what they can say is, I I feel concerned and that's why I'm, 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 I'm doing what I'm doing or that's why my voice is high. I feel disappointed. I feel dismayed. I feel exhausted. I feel this. You have to say what you feel and you have to be able to uh, receive it from the child's end too because there there will be a day where you'll be like, oh my God, I'm such a good parent. I'm calm. I don't yell. I listen to my children. My children are so open to me and your child comes in. Mama, do you know? Sometimes you're just so boring. And you're like, what? I have scheduled my entire day around your existence and you still think I'm boring. But you're able to receive that and receive that and comprehend it that why is the child saying and you have to be inquisitive and curious about asking, where did this thought come from? What are you thinking? What exactly are you pointing out at? So do you understand how the first step to nonviolence in our parenting is by processing our emotions and by by creating a two-way street of discussion even with our youngest child so what was my solution in my head what would my solution be for that two three year old well i don't know i don't know that nature of that child's temperament that was not my kid that was not my kid and it will be so wrong for me to say oh the mother should have done this and this and this that is judgment that is judgment give grace to any parent that you see around you give grace to yourself um, and now I'll stop here and I'll ask Sister Sara if she has any thoughts, inshallah. Mashallah, yeah, um, I agree with that. Like, uh, you can look at someone and think, oh my goodness, what are they doing, you know, with their child? And you can kind of have these feelings. But like uh, Sister Iram said, we don't know that child. We don't know what the mother's been through. We don't know what the child's been through. But we can still think about uh, them as a person and we can offer support. I'm not saying advice. Um, we laughed about that the other day, what we said. Um, uh, we I talked to Sister Iram and, and she said to me, uh, I know that you're going to listen to me, you're going to offer support. And I still offered her some, uh, some advice. But, you know, at the end of the day, we can still help each other and we can um, look at 
ourselves and think about like when you said the um when you said you said because you're just so mad and you're like right i know that this thing is going to get the rid of the shaitan from me but i'm so crazy mad and then you're just shouting at it right and then the kids are looking at you like mom seriously what's wrong calm down you know and obviously when they say to you calm down you just get more mad don't you <laughs> right so we have this um we have this feeling that we are going to be the most amazing moms and and you know i've been there as well and sister Iram said the same that when you think you know i'm always there i make play-doh from scratch i bake cookies with them i'm such a good mom why are you so horrible to me again we're bringing it back to ourselves and we think about the children as being an extension of ourselves whereas we should think of them as being individual beings on their own inshallah <clears throat> sorry i just want to um point out uh, sister safi said you can still issue a consequence to bad behavior or not listening and why is that a problem no sister we're not saying that you can't issue any consequences that's not what we're talking about it's not a problem at all you must issue consequences but we're talking about non-violent consequences we're talking about natural consequences so, um, for example, if a child refuses to put their shoes on and you're like, come on, we need to go, we need to go, we'll get your shoes on. And the child's just like, ah, la, 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 can't be bothered to put their shoes on. Okay, you can walk out of the door with no shoes, right? You can get them to walk out of the door, get in the car with no shoes. At the end of the day, the consequence of not wearing their shoes is either in your guys' countries, it's too cold for their feet. And in our country, it's burning hot on their feet, right? So so I'm giving you a solution, guy, put your shoes on. And I know one of them, one of my boys is just like, ah, no, no. like he just doesn't want to wear them at all. He would like, you know, we call him Mowgli sometimes because he hangs around <laughs> like the little boy from the um, Jungle Book. So in, 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 uh, in the process of being a parent, we do have to discipline. We do have to, um, you know, make them see our point of view, I guess, or help them to see our point of view. We do have to get them to do things, but we're talking about nonviolent ways of doing that. So Sister Safi, it will be, um, inshallah, we'll try to give you as much help as we can. Um, Dr. Yasmin mm -hmm. says, that after discussion with her child, her 11 year old son, she came to the conclusion that he has five demands. And according to the give and take rule, he will follow our five demands and we will give him five demands. And then for the next two days, the same story again. So there's only a 10 or 20% improvement, not listening. So I'll just say something. And then I think Sister Erin will have excellent advice for this because I think I'm. <laughs> No, I think you have. Um, so in terms of what I would say to you, this word demand, first of all, right? It just, it just oozes of like, this is what I want you to do. If you maybe sit together with your son and yourself and think about the things that you would like him to do and give him choices, right? So for example, your son says, I want five hours on my video game in the evening. And you're like, well, I think one hour is enough. Come to a, um, a compromise, right? So weigh it up and think to yourself, okay, if I give him that extra one hour on the video game, okay, yes, it is two hours, but you know, it's holidays. I can let two hours go. You can give a bit of a compromise. Then that means that you'll come down to your son's level. Your son will come up to your level. So in terms of when you say to him, right, this is your job. I want the, you know, I want these chores done. The bins need to be sent out. You need to sweep the floor. You need to take the dishes in after we've eaten. These are your jobs. As long as as the jobs are done I'm cool with that as long as your homework is done I'm okay with whatever else you do that so most of um you know like well as they were growing up what they what my kids used to do was do their work as soon as they can because they know that after that I've got no issue with them they can do whatever they like they can play go out uh, do their crafts do baking whatever it is so that again we're we're all happy then right and if you're all happy then it does help with that calm 
peaceful um, household. And Sister Navika said that the communication with your child, 100%, that's exactly what we're talking about. So talking about from their point of view, what they're like, from your point of view, and trying to bring those two points of view together, inshallah. You know, and a couple of the strategies that we'll share that we'll share today, inshallah, will help you with that. What do you think, Sister? Just like a long parent, uh, absolutely, I agree with it. And thank you so much for the video game thing. I want to I want to point out a very uh, important fact here. Parents, what they don't realize is that the children are not an extension of them. Yes, they're not an extension of us. And yes, they're a test. And yes, they're a gift. And yes, they're an am amana. Alhamdulillah, these three things we have to realize all the time. Um, what parents don't un look at, and, and, and I'm not shy to say this because it's true for me too, is that we um, judge our children without thinking where did they, they get these habits from? Where did they get this attitude from? Where did they get this language from? Where did, where are they getting this from? And it is it is from our own behaviors, our own manners, our own conversations that we are having with other adults around. The children are picking certain things. And then, of course, their school and their buddies and their teachers and, and the environment and the friendship settings that they have, they're, they're picking some from there too. But the majority of it comes from us. So if, and I have seen this over and over again, and I, I, and I, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for us. I've seen parents say, my child is just too stubborn. He or she, they, they do not give in. Being stubborn is not that bad. Actually, it's good. It's, it will help them and later in life, it will make them resilient. You know, good uh, maintaining the circumstances are okay and it requires them to be stubborn or it requires them to be resilient. But when we do not gauge in how we are talking and we are only listening and we're only paying attention to how they are responding, that's the problem number one. I'll, I'll give an example. Do this. Why aren't you doing this? You don't have any... These, these are how usually we say this. Mothers, I will say, I'll tell you about myself. I, uh, because I want, I want to make this experience as much as human as possible. We are not saying that we are PhD scholars, scientists, etc. We've cracked the code. Nay, alhamdulillah, our children give us a hard time uh, and we give them a hard time too. I will say this for myself. I give my kids a hard time too. The thing is, I realized I was not even compassionate or even empathetic to my one-year-old or to my two-year-old. What is this? Why is your mouth like this? Now a two-year-old is enjoying chocolate. They're going to do it all over their face and that's completely okay. Now for me, it's okay. Can I go back to when my kid was two-year-old and when I used to like, whatever I did, may Allah forgive me? No. So when we are angry, and when we are not at peace with our own self and when we do not hear how we are uttering our words, these conversations of I want you to do this or please understand video games or online or Instagram or TikTok or whatever is not good for you. It's not good for your spiritual health, emotional health, mental health. You give them articles, you talk to them, you try to talk to them, you put passwords, you cancel Wi-Fi, you don't give them the phone, you keep the phone away, you uh, you uh, stop the Wi-Fi for the entire night for yourself and for your family. All of this is, all of these are interventions and you know what's going to best work for you. But what we don't realize, and I know this for a fact, what mothers and fathers, they don't realize is, that their fear of saving their child uh, is so uh, obvious in their conversations, the children pick up on it, A, they get frustrated. Before you open the mouth, the child is already frustrated. MashaAllah, tabarakallah. And then number two is the children, they either push our buttons, which they're supposed to, their children, what are they supposed to do? Push our buttons, right? But they also lose empathy for us. They lose um, because they they don't see empathy for them in our in our statements. We are throwing demands at them. We are throwing uh, we are throwing judgments at them. We are throwing things at them that make them feel little. That basically belittle them. If I say something to my child as, "Are you dumb? Are you stupid? Did you not know?" I'll give you just now. We just had suhoor. We just had suhoor, right? 
Uh, my daughter, she served her grandfather. Uh, uh, he asked for a pair. And I said, Rumesa, give uh, him the pair with the knife. Okay? I forgot to add the plate. My husband comes in and he sees his dad eating pear with the knife, no plate. And he says, Abuji, uh, should I bring you a plate? I'm washing dishes and Rumesa is right behind me. She's bringing dishes back and forth from the dining table. I look at her. Death stare. How dare you do not give him a plate? Why? And then I just calm down. I'm like, it's okay. It's okay. Abuji is fine. <laughs> he's, he's fine. He's not complaining. It's just like she missed. And I said, Rumesa, you didn't give a plate? And she said, I give the knife. <laughs> Yeah, why am I saying this? I'm saying this because, again, we forget, but we have to reel ourselves back. What parents are, I'll give you another example. And this example is important. There's this parent and she's, she's doing everything in her power to help her child, um, to help save her child from, you know, gaming addiction. The child is only 12 years old, but the child is very, very, um, you know, um, he's, he went into bad company. They brought him back from the bad company. But the mother is adamant at this point that, you know what? The Muslim community is not good for my kid. She must have had bad experiences. The Muslim community is not good for my kid and I don't want to put him in Islamic schools because she looks down at Islamic schools. And yes, Islamic schools are not properly funded. And in many places of the world, Islamic schools are actually not properly funded. Private schools or Western schools are much more better uh, funded. They have sports, they have stadiums, they have, you know, everything uh, under the under one roof because of the funding. And so the child now uses it, and the mother doesn't realize this, that she is basically bad-mouthing the Muslim community. She is bad-mouthing the, um, uh, the Islamic centers. And because of her experience, yes, there are certain things that were not right. But is, is it everywhere the same? Or is her experience the only kind of experience that the child is going to experience? No. When I say that you need to take the child out of the atmosphere that he is in, so because of so the poison that is seeping in him, we will be able to cut it. She says, no, there's no other choice. Th they, those people are bad. Those people are bad. Those people are bad. What do you think is happening in the son's head? Everybody is bad. Who is good? I am good. Or who is good? What I'm doing is good. And they will bring forth arguments where they will say, well, you hate entire population. My kids sometimes they say this. Mom, is there anybody on earth that you like? <laughs> like a stop it a <laughs> So yeah, that's about it. Um, uh, Sister Usman Kosa, you have your hand up. Would you like to join the conversation? I'm not sure. She's got a hand up. Maybe she put it down. Sarah, I have an example here that I want to give. Oh, Assalamu alaikum, well, sister. Can I speak to Urdu, please? Uh, there are other non-Urdu non speaking people as well. There are non-Urdu speakers well. here today. But maybe at the end you can speak to us when we've gone off the live. Is that okay? Okay, thank you. No okay. worries. Sorry, inshallah, I just wanted to give one exa uh, two examples that are here in front of me. Uh, can I do that before? Yeah, I of course. Yeah. Here. So... Um, when Johnny said to his dad, Simon, I just can't do this homework. Simon wanted to reassure him. So Simon's the dad, right? So he says, never mind. I'm sure you'll manage with some extra help. Responding like that does not meet the child's needs for understanding and empathy. Instead, the dad should have, the dad can respond by saying, are you feeling frustrated because you really like to understand what you're doing? So you see how the thing is the same. It is still about support, but now the dad is asking instead of saying, you will get support. Like, where is the kid going to get the support from, right? Another one is, uh, for example, when Billy says to his mother, you're so unfair, and she can choose to respond, are you feeling frustrated because you're needing fairness? Like, which, you, which we usually say. Uh, and the child will say, yes, you let my other brother watch TV after nine, but you won't let me. So are you upset because you want equality? He was, he's going to respond again, like, because the mother is saying, are you upset because of what you're saying? What is it that you actually want? Do you want equality? Do you want to be able to watch TV after nine, like your brother? We usually know, usually we know why the child is saying what they're saying. Sometimes we don't, and the child gets frustrated and they say, no, this is not what I'm saying. So you have to gauge, you have to learn, and this comes with practice. It will not come like instantly not not by just listening to me this is not going to come we have to learn how we have to develop this skill and in order to develop this skill the most 
easiest way to do is read articles, read books, listen to lectures like these and practice it. Like even in your head, practice the conversation. Um, we are on, uh, I was thinking about this. We as women, and uh, Sara, you will agree to this. We as women, knowingly or unknowingly, are rushed human beings. Everything in our life has to be rushed. And it is so funny because when we were teens, our mothers used to say, you're the most laziest human being on earth. At least I've heard that many times from my mom. Like, seriously, you know, move, right? And as soon as you become mothers, everything is like on speed dial. Mode, like, and sometimes even it, 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 like our anxiety levels hurt us. Our, our body hurts. Our mind hurts. Our words don't come out properly. Our tone is not good enough. And we need to learn how to just breathe and calm down breathe and calm down and before saying something actually say it in our head the 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 problem is that we are so used to instantaneous responses that we don't even think what are we saying and how are we saying it just if you imply these two things into your conversations the conversations become much calmer like my voice has now and much more effective Inshallah. Sorry, I'm good now. That's fine. There, um, there were good examples that you gave, Mashallah. And uh, I smiled when you said about the mothers are always in a rush. So my, uh, uh, well, I have two examples, but they're kind of interlinked. So <clears throat> uh, my sister, she, uh, she used to live right next to me in Dubai. So we used to go out a lot together. So we used to be like, oh, you know, what time are we going out or where are we going or whatever? Um, let's say we're going to the zoo. So she's like, okay, I'll come to your house by three. Is that okay? And she's like, are you going to be ready at three or, or shall I come at four kind of thing, right? So there's like a difference. Obviously you've got kids, you know, you sometimes you don't know when you're going to get there or whatever. So I would be racing around getting the children ready. So I'd be like, quickly go, you put your shoes on, you get your bag. You, did you put some water bottles in there? Did you? Did we do this? Did we do that? Running, running, running. And she'll come really calmly, really nicely in such a good chilled out mood. And she'll be like, yeah, 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 quickly, quickly. Hurry up, hurry up, hurry up, everyone, so we can go and relax. <laughs> and she used to say it nearly every time, you know. And um, my uh, and I, when I realized what she was saying, it does make sense, right? We should actually slow down a little bit and enjoy the journey, enjoy the process, right? Um, yes, getting ready uh, for a certain time. It's not easy when you have like, you know, a per one person still needs to go to the bathroom, the other person, they still don't have their shorts on, the other person and so on. But if you have systems in place, and I was actually talking about that this morning with another, uh, with a, a colleague of mine actually, ex-colleague but about having the systems in place so that the kids know where their socks are the kids know where their shoes are the kids know so they can do a lot of their things independently then that helps you as a parent when you are in a rush and you realize oh my god you know I've still got to pray my zohar and we've got to get out of the house in 10 minutes you know if you're in that situation it does happen of course it happens it happens all the time close it carefully darling yeah so in in terms of um of you as a parent i think we have to realize that um we as parents sorry about that yeah okay so in terms of um we as parents we need to understand okay to get my kids ready is going to take me at least an hour and a half so rather than rushing within half an hour to go as you probably used to do when you only had one kid or you did when you and your it was just you and your husband or when you did when you were a single parent um not single parent sorry single person but you know when you were in a different situation, you needed a different amount of time. So if you kind of realize, actually, to get me all to get us all ready, it takes this much time. Now you won't have to rush, inshallah. So that's one thing. And the other example is of my brother-in-law's parents, mashallah, Allah, um, 
give um, his mother Jannah and his father's still around. But, you know, when we used to go again to visit my sister or something and everyone again, we're all getting ready to go out somewhere and um, um, and we'll be getting ready and rushing around. And then my brother-in-law would say something like, come on, hurry up, hurry up, children, let's go because we've got to come back yet. <laughs> So, <laughs> I don't know how to say it in English very well, but if you say it in Punjabi, it just sounds hilarious. But his dad used to say the same, same thing, you know, like we've got to come back yet. So again, the same kind of idea that if we think about the time that it's going to take, inshallah, that will really help um, to understand and we're not going to be rushing and then inshallah it will keep us calm and you know keep us on that even keel and it is very difficult it's not easy is it Aram? like it's not a you know it's not something that you just say oh you know today I'm going to be a calm parent and all of a sudden you become calm um, and also we struggle with it a lot we try our, we try so hard but there are certain days where we just you know literally and but you then then you have to think about yourself what's going on with me that is making me act like this it's not what the child is doing because most of the chat time the child is doing exactly whatever they've always been doing i don't think our children overnight change behavior right but you know yesterday you were fine with them and today you're just acting like a crazy old woman they're looking at you like what happened to you today mom right mm -hmm. so we have to realize what's happening to us right today i'm fasting today i have three meetings today i'm still super hungry because you know i didn't eat breakfast first or whatever the these reasons you've got to think to yourself right how um how am i going to be able to navigate the next um stage right and you know and navigate the next hour i know that i'm hungry i know that i'm tired but there's still one hour to iftar so how can i make myself realize that i have to be calm inshallah and once we start realizing that it's about ourselves then inshallah you'll notice that you'll make a difference with your children because it's not always about reacting with them. And again, I just want to say one more thing about, I love the idea what Aram said about practicing and role play. And that works with your children as well. Cause I don't know if any of your children come home and they say, oh mom, this girl, she was so mean to me today. Um, you know, or they or they say like, um, I had a really bad day that, you know, some, this girl said this or this boy said this. So you do role play with them. You say, okay, well, if the boy says that again to you, what are you gonna say? You know, if he says, oh, you've got an ugly banana. Yes, one of my kids came home and said that to me. <laughs> This boy told me I had an ugly banana. <laughs> okay, so you say, well, Allah made everything and Allah made pretty things and Allah made the things that don't look very nice. <laughs> um, you know, so in, in that way, you practice, right? And when you practice, inshallah, you'll notice that it will make it a lot easier for you to um, navigate these situations. Because again, you've practiced just like you've got uh, your body's immune system works in exactly the same way right so in your body you've got these white blood cells and when you get sick they remember how to defend your body against that sickness so there's whatever bacteria comes in they know oh yeah it's that bug again let me get it right they remember they've got memory cells so in the same way you guys can use that same idea and inshallah use your own memory cells to remind yourself hey you know what i can do this i can do this i can do this and the same thing that inshallah listen to these um talks with us inshallah you know uh, talk to other people right um sister Aram, isn't that how we started the yeah. whole idea of parenting because we were asking each other for advice with our children right and we realized that there was a need for this there was a need to help parents to parent inshallah mm -hmm. um i just, sorry go sorry go on go on say say yours Aram, then i'll do the next one uh and i was just going to to add to that point uh usually okay 
So uh, you and another mother are parents of children who are going to the same class. You're probably not going to go to that parent for advice and for conversations. Tiga, maybe, maybe, there's, maybe there's a sense of competition. Maybe there's a sense of jealousy. Maybe you just rub each other off the wrong way. There is online community. Go as anonymous person and ask about your situation. You will get, you know, you know, you need to know how to uh, reach out and how to, uh, inshallah, compare the advices to see, okay, this is what the majority is saying. This is the mindset. Is this closest to the Quran and Sunnah? Your your number one gauge should be, is this closest to the Quran and Sunnah? Because um, usually when you're in the same circle, in the same social gatherings, you don't want to discuss your child's dirty laundry, or at least that's what you're thinking in your mind, that these people are going to judge my child based on the fact that I told that this child is doing this at home. So you don't want to go and discuss that outside. Okay, fine. Don't discuss it in your social circle. Discuss it in your online circle. Discuss it as an anonymous post, but do it. You have the tools to do it. You have the tools to reach out to people who are coaches, parents, experienced parents, uh, you know, et cetera, et cetera, educationists who, who, can, who can guide you. That's definitely true. I love that. And asking people for help, don't forget to ask like different people for different opinions because, um, for example, when I was trying to put my eldest to sleep, you know, the first time putting her in her new bed, and I'd read this book about uh, crying, the cry out method, and I thought, wow, you know, I must do that. Yeah, it's going to, you know, I'm going to get my child to sleep through the night or, or whatever. Um, I put her in the bed, I left the room. It did not work with me. I was crying. She was crying. My husband has tears in his eyes. And again, my sister, bless her, because she lives so nearby, um, pops her head in and she's like, why is the child crying for so long? What is wrong with you? You know? And, um, and she was like, uh, goes in the room, she grabs her. And my sister at this point is not a parent. She's not married. She doesn't have children. She just parented out of compassion for that child that was crying but I was like no I've got to follow this method because this method is going to make my child sleep you know so in in that way you've read something you've thought yeah that's going to work but then you realize hang on a minute that doesn't work with me or my family yes of course you're going to try it you're going to see if it works but if it doesn't work go to a different method so I've become, I would say, an attachment parent, co-sleeper, uh, breastfeeder, you know, hippie kind of parent where the kids always hanging off me somewhere. You know, the children are right next to me. Um, I'm not that kind of parent that just, you know, um, that the kids, I, I wouldn't even say I'm not the kind of parent. My children seem to be the kind of kids that are always around near me. And sometimes I want my space, but they don't want to give it to me. <laughs> right. So there's even that side as well. Um, again, you know, with with these uh, children, you parent differently. Some of them, uh, you know, by the age, like some of my children, by the age of three or four, they're in their own room. Some of them are in their own room for most of the night, but seven-year-old still comes into my bed. And I'm okay with that because that's how I've decided to parent, yeah? And that might not work for you. It might not. You might be one of those parents, again, I need my space, leave me alone. I need to sleep, right? And if that is you, then you need to find your way to get to that solution. And it doesn't mean that, um, you know, cry out, well, for me, yeah, I, I wouldn't do something like cry out. I just think it, it's just harmful on myself and my child. Actually, but, the, the studies say it's harmful for the child too. Yeah. I mean, so and they, have, they, they do develop att attachment issues and it is a traumatic experience for the child too. And there was that study, we talked about that study before as well, didn't we? About the uh, children that didn't get that nurturing from their, from their primary carer. So mm -hmm. if the child was crying and the mother doesn't go to comfort them, or if the mother's not around, the father, the grandma, whoever it is next to them, doesn't go to comfort that child, that child grows up thinking, nobody cares about me. No mm -hmm. one's bothered about me. So again, you need to show the children that you do care. You need to interact with them. You need to engage with them. And sometimes you need to act um, as though they are adults 
I know that sounds really weird, uh, you know, for parents no, to no, think it makes sense. Yeah. A child, but they're yeah. a child, you know, they don't know, they don't have an opinion. Actually, they, do. they don't have an opinion, <laughs> they really do. And okay. sometimes their opinions are, you know, sometimes, have you noticed that, Iram? They give yeah. you like some really insightful Good advice, yes. Excellent yeah. advice, right? Where you think, oh yeah, I didn't think about it like that actually. Thanks for that, Miriam. Thanks for that, Aisha. Usually, as it, these are my two eldest daughters, they will give me that advice, you know, and they'll say, Mom, wouldn't it be better if we do it like this? And I'll go, Wow, that's fantastic. Mm -hmm. And again, when you're doing that, you're encouraging them to come up with more ideas. So they're not going to uh, feel inferior in front of other people when they are sharing those ideas, inshallah. Um, I just want to point out what Sister Sharif. Mm. Oh, I think Sharif's is a surname. Um, SubhanAllah, sisters, the point about parenting out of fear really resonates with me. At that point where bedtime is overdue, et cetera, et cetera, how do you say stay a compassionate parent? Do you want to start don't. with that? You don't stay a compassionate parent. Jill, the truth is, the truth is, you're not always going to stay compassionate. My body needs will overcome my sensibility. I'm irritated. I'm agitated. I did not sleep well. My body is aching and this child is not sleeping. And if this child is not asleep, which means I need to stay awake, which I can't stay awake. I can't keep my eyes open. Compassion has gone out of the window. It just committed suicide. Halas. <laughs> <laughs> See, this is not a, a, a bubblegum, pink, beautiful world where, you know, nay, uh, yes, there will be. And that is why there is Jannah under our feet, honestly, seriously, because, and I, you know why I'm saying this? Today, I can say this. Today, I can say this because I see my sister, my own sister. I have just one sister. She's younger to me. And she has a special child and that child has a genetic disability and that disability is never going to go away and the only thing that she looks forward to is that one day she'll be able to through therapies bring her child to at least uh be able to feed himself you know that's that's her entire that's her entire thought process and that child does not sleep usually children with special needs those mothers know that they have they have given up sleep those mothers have given up sleep Sincerely, uh, on Dr. Tamara Gray, she runs a, a Rabatha Institute. Once she was in her lecture saying that one of her best friends, and her best friend was a PhD, right? It is a PhD, uh, uh, and a very highly educated woman. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at some point in her life granted her with a kid who now, mashallah, is uh, in her 20s. And that child is a special needs child. And the child has not slept more than three hours since, since the birth since the birth and Dr. Tamara out of compassion and out of mercy and you know out of you know you feel for your best friend you feel for your sisters you feel for people that you feel that you see that are suffering so much you say how how do you manage like 20 plus years you haven't slept I don't think you've slept more than three hours for 20 plus years and you know how do you manage to stay sane she said the only the only reason that I stay sane is because I know that Allah has promised Jannah to those parents who are compassionate to specifically these kinds of children and allah has also allah has given us mercy in the quran allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us that 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 level that you know what don't say off to your parents be kind to your parents but i always say this that that level comes after that kind the, the kind of sacrifice that bring, brings us to that level so yes we cannot always be compassionate and yes we are very human and yes we are derived by our emotions and uh, according to our situation we will lash out but th th what we're trying to say is lash out less <laughs> my best <laughs> my best it happens we all get you know we get to those stages and there are certain times where the bedtime gets late okay I just want to give another quick example with the same kind of idea, right? So if the bedtime has got late, right? And you're like, oh my God. And what's happening now is in your mind, you're thinking the bedtime's late. That means she's going to, when she wakes up in the morning, she's going to be all, you know, uh, irritated and ratty. And then I'm going to have a really hard time getting her ready for school. And then school's going to start. And then I'm going to have to drag this crying child. You're not thinking about right now the bedtime is late you're thinking about all the different things that are going to happen because the bedtime got late right mm -hmm. so in terms of that what you can do is just reframe that thinking and think 
uh, about it in a in a little box right okay so think yes okay the bedtime is late but it's not the you know end of the world <laughs> yeah you know it, it's not it's not uh the be all and end all that my child slept late today you know it's still possible that the child will wake up tomorrow morning happy chirpy and ready to go right so um and funnily enough sometimes these things happen you know right on the right time so last night Hafsa she uh well did do you remember that guy uh, that time I told you I went out on Wednesday so Hafsa still hasn't got over the fact that I went out for one evening in the last one year right so she uh, she's still suffering from this for a week so she remembers it every five minutes that mummy you went out and you left me alone and mummy you went out you know and then I keep on trying to reframe it so every time she says it I put like a sweet in her mouth or I find some ways to like <laughs> give her some positive association with the fact that mom went out right um so yesterday i had to go shopping it was really late at night but we needed like the fresh ingredients as you do and um so i said so my husband was like no nope, she has to go to bed she has to go i said listen right what's the worst that can happen let her sleep in the car and you know she'll be fine she obviously slept in the car she had a nap and then by the time we came back it was already 10 30 but she did have some sleep in the car but obviously now i need to put her to bed so she'll wake up in the morning and i'm thinking the same as what you you probably thinking sister like oh my god tomorrow morning she's gonna wake up she's gonna do this so we made a pinky promise so I said, I said, Hafsa, pinky promise in the morning, you're going to be good and you're just going to wake up and you're just going to go to um, your school. She's got uh, like a little morning class. It's three hours a day, but, you know, she has to go. And um, and she actually pinky promised me. And then in the morning she was like bright. She was actually she wasn't like, you know, I said, remember, you had some sleep in the car. So, again, you're reframing that whole situation to work in your favor. You know, and maybe if I hadn't been reading all about positive parenting all day in preparation for today, I might not have done that. Right. I'll be honest with you. <laughs> but in terms of reminding yourself and keep on reminding yourself in the same way, we remind ourselves about Islam. We remind ourselves about Allah. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. We remind ourselves about the stories of the Prophet. Sallam, you know, we keep reminding, reminding ourselves, reminding each other, reminding the people that are closest, nearest and dearest us to us inshallah to um you know those reminders help you to figure out your way and my way and your way do not have to be the same is that right sister absolutely yeah? absolutely like i said i mean whatever works for you but make it work uh from the from the spectrum of mercy and compassion and forgiveness uh, i ask myself often when i get extremely angry. I, I, I repeat that verse uh, in Surah An nur when, uh, and the story is of Abu Bakr and Aisha radiallahu anha and their cousin who Abu Bakr radiallahu anha was financing and when he uh, was involved and when that cousin was involved in in the gossiping against Aisha radiallahu anha, uh, he did get punished but Abu Bakr said, I'm not going to, you know, I'm not going to feed him anymore and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, sends down those verses and one of the verses is, don't you want Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive you? And I think in my head that and it uh, it raises a level of taqwa out of out of like me thinking like Allahu Akbar. If Allah is saying don't you want Allah to forgive you then who am I? Does does ghazab and does anger uh, suit anyone more than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with everything that we humans do in, 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 in you know, cutting corners in al hukuk Allah, in our hukuk al ibad Taqwa and Quran and learning and continuous introspection is the only way where, is the only way where you can actually try and inshallah succeed in your parenting. That's the only way. There's, there's no, uh, there's no other recipe. Days we will fail and days we will pass. So the things that we need to remind ourselves is, don't we want Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive us? Is, 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 is our anger more than Allah's wrath? And Allah has said, I have forbidden oppression on myself. I, Allah has said this. This is Hadith al-Qudsi. Allah says, I have forbidden oppression on myself and he does not oppress. And then when we oppress ourselves and our children and our relatives and, you know, out of, out of, out of what? Out of egos. 
out of just frustrations, out of because we have a victim mindset or because yes, yes, our rights might not, might not be given to us properly, but does Allah not see? Are we short of making dua? Don't we have trust and faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? There are many things, there are many things that come into this part. I want to, the other day, I um, I will I will um, give a few examples that I have right here in front of me, but before that, I want to say something, and it's extremely important. And uh, Bernie Brown, she has talked so much about heart and about emotions, and she's a PhD, and she has her whole lab, and she has books, blah, 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 etc., etc. And one of her talks was, and I didn't hear the, for the whole talk, just just the caption of it was that she asked another professor in Yale University that is um, is resentment from anger. You know, when you're angry at your children and when you're resentful at their at your children or when you're resentful at your spouse or when you're resentful. And he and, and that, that professor said, no, resentment is not from anger. Resentment is from envy. And she gives she goes on to say. That means that when I am resentful towards someone, it's because I know I'm missing what this person has. And if we've not, and if we're not in a happy place, and I, I agree with this, I agree with this because I know that when I was not in a happy place in my mind, that does not mean that my life is perfect. When I'm not happy and peaceful in my mind, in my soul, in my ibadah, I was resentful towards my kids' giggles. And their laughs and their silliness and their and their uh, you know and and their silly requests and 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 just them being kids and my question would never end why are you like this and why are you like that they're just they're just kids what what was I resentful for I am not as happy as you are I feel the burden and you you have no clue how how burdensome this parenting job is they did not ask us to bring them into this world we did what we did and they came and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has written them as our risk and what do we do with our risk so so keep that in mind keep that in mind any strategy and every strategy and whatever strategy that you hear that you see that that we've discussed do what you need to do I 100% agree with Sara there's no other better advice here you need to know what works for you but first work on yourself if I am resentful because I feel that I am being shortchanged or my life is struggling because of these kids and many mothers say this. Many mothers say this. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us for this. We don't mean it, but we say this. It is because of you that I have a miserable life. Don't do this. Don't do this. Inshallah. I, I said I want, want to give a few examples. And then inshallah, uh, uh, I'll, uh, so offering empathy. So offering empathy, how do you offer empathy? Instead of saying, look at how nicely Annie Mary is playing. Why don't you play like that? You we usually say that. So instead we say, when you take that toy car from your friend, are you feeling curious because you want to explore and learn? The children are basically going to say, no, I just don't want him to play. I want to play. And that's completely okay. That's a child's thing to do. But it is our thing to parent and rephrase. Yesterday night, I went for Tarawi. Allahu Akbar. There was this mother and, and her kids were like just one year apart. And one is five and one is six. No, one is four and one is five probably. That mother is praying that those children, I mean they were about to kill themselves at one point i had to put my hand because the other one pushed the first one into the cubby and i thought that his head is going to crack right i wasn't praying actually so so i and the whole time i'm reading the book and i'm looking at them and i'm reading the book and, I, and at one point i even told one of them i said don't hit him that hard and he said no no <laughs> <I'm> like, <laughs> okay <laughs> hit him better hit him. it's okay <laughs> the mother is like, mashallah, tomorrow girl, I'm thinking. And this is so funny. This is so funny. After hitting each other, after like exhausting their energy, both of them, both of them, Allahu Akbar, they went one to the right of the mother, one to the left of the mother, and they started praying. Four and five year old, what are they praying? They're just like doing the actions, right? And after that, the mother is like, and the mother is like, oh, my little but like, show nice, my kids. They, she has no clue what they were doing behind her. Or maybe she does, but she, no, I mean, it's her kids. She probably knows. And then she gives them, and she said, oh, I got you something. I got some, the doodling thing for you. And of course, she has one. So the younger one snatches it from the older one. He says, I'm not going to give it to you. And the older one is actually not very interested. So he plays around, but then he starts snatching it. And now the mother starts praying again, the other set of Taravi. So he starts snatching it. You know what the younger one does? He picks the brutal and tosses it on his head. I'm like, Allah, 
And then the older one goes crying, goes behind the mother, cries herself out. Halas, they're friends again. They're playing again. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, the, the whole reason for this is that sometimes those empathetic words or be nice or be kind or just trying to rephrase is not going to work and don't get hooked on the fact that i'm trying this methodology it should work be uh, satisfied with the fact that you are trying a methodology it will click it will not click it will click once it will not click the other time it's okay don't like allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says don't be focused on the result make your effort learn the skills make your effort and keep making your effort so, i have others but um, first i want you to say something um, no, I completely agree with that. You know, when I was thinking um, with the mother that was trying to do her tarawih, I was just thinking that, subhanAllah, what a good effort that she was making mm -hmm. in going to pray that salah, right? But also, didn't she realize that, subhanAllah, she's going to get rewarded whatever she does this Ramadan? Just put that intention that whatever I do this Ramadan, whatever I do for my children, for my life, for my work, for my, uh, when you make the iftar for them, when you make the suhoor for them, when you're washing those dishes that Erin was telling us about this morning, right? Okay, whatever we're doing, inshallah, we're going to get rewarded for. Okay, and I think you said this last week as well, Iram, and I actually said it to one of my cousins um, this weekend, the same thing. In those first years of marriage, when you've got the, that time with it's just you and your husband, go to all the tarawees you can, right? Go do all the talks that you want to go to, listen to everything that you want to listen to, try to get that education beforehand as much as you can, yeah. right? Because once that child comes, your attention, your focus will be on that child, whether good or bad. We're not obviously, inshallah, you know, worshipping our children, astaghfirullah. But at the end of the day, what if that mother kept her child at home with her, played with them, let them get tired, put them to bed, and then she read her drawi in a bit more maybe peaceful manner? That could mm -hmm. be one thing. The second thing, there's no problem with the kids playing around. Honestly, I, you know, subhanallah, let them play problem, and let them yeah. enjoy that. There's no issue at all. But... If, you, if you're going to bring something, right, seriously, I was like, you said the same thing. Why one? Come on. And, and the mother, at that moment, she says, we're going to share. And I'm thinking in my head, no. It's not going to happen. You know your children. You know they're not going to share, right? Um, my, uh, I, I think I've told you guys this before. Well, well I've told people on parenting ch channel before, but... My dad used to have, we used to have a tradition of going for a drive. So he would just, you know, like get all of us in the car when he's fed up and he's just like, right, we're just going to drive. Yeah. Okay. Until obviously we all fall asleep in the car. That was his plan. <laughs> but sometimes the drive would go on for ages and sometimes we would end up somewhere random and he would buy ice cream or he would buy chocolate or he would buy something. And he would always buy three Snickers bars. They were called Marathon back then and three cans of Coke. And I knew I would share with my brother and he knew that he's going to share with me. My two sisters were going to share and the parents were going to share. But we were trained that way from the beginning. We never yes. had this thing of you know that everyone's gonna have their own full can of coke so if you're trained from that way from the beginning then it will work for sure but my kids are not trained that way my kids have had a full can of coke if i tell them that by the way you're sharing now they're gonna look at me like why did you lose your job or something what happened <laughs> <laughs> Why? what mom it's like one dirham what's wrong with you <laughs> you know we've raised, we have we have raised entitled children we have done Very that entitled. ourselves and so 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 it's not their fault when when they no. come out saying like what's wrong with you why do you suddenly you know want want this from me it, exactly it, it, and we can't expect them we will inshallah try to um, you know, we, it, it's nice if they share, inshallah, of course, right? But in that situation where you need to do something, you've got uh, a task that you want to do, that is pray your tarawih, you know, and inshallah, try to pray as peacefully as you possibly can. 
Um, apologies, my daughter just keeps coming in and out of the door. I told you they don't stay far away from me. Um, but <laughs> but um, if you want to do that peaceful tarawi, then inshallah have them near you and let them have their one book each, their one device each, their one thing that will help you make that tarawi a more of a peaceful process, right? Um, I don't know, I don't feel like, I don't want to judge anyone that, you know, they can do whatever they like. But in terms of peaceful parenting, in terms of, you know, like, okay, alhamdulillah, that mother didn't get mad at her kids. She knew that they were in a situation. So she said, oh, well done for praying and, you know, encouraged them and so on. But what if um, she, you know, was the opposite way? What if she was getting frustrated with what they were doing and where they were going and why they were arguing. And then that would cause her to be on the other side of that spectrum that we were just talking about, about that peaceful parenting and non-peaceful parenting, right? Inshallah, I mean, like, alhamdulillah, we've, we've, jazakallah khair, so we've reached the one hour, so I think we need to stop. But uh, Sister Uzma wanted to ask us, I see her question, she's written it. She says, I have a 12-year-old boy, he's, he never talks to me or my husband, and he's always quiet around us, but he talks a lot with his friends, and I'm so worried. Now, these are, this is a layered question, I do not know your uh, communication with him, your husband's, or your, how, how your marriage basically affects the parenting. I do not know any of this, but usually in this age, uh, children just talk to their friends. That 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 is a fact. Um, uh, so I'm not sure how to answer this question at this point. But uh, inshallah, ta'ala, one of the fears is that if your child is not talking to you, are you fearful that they're hiding something? Do you have you investigated? Do you see that they're hiding something or they're in bad company? Then you can be fearful. But if they're not talking to you just because you are not so engaged with them in their conversations, or do you not know his interests and find out his interests, trying to bring those interests into into communication? The twelve year old is inquisitive. A twelve year old will talk to you. Only the language needs to change, the, the, uh, the connection needs to be made. What is he uh, interested in? right probably that's one thing and but then sometimes there are children who do not talk. I have this client, he's a 16 year old boy. That child for one hour did not say apart from those two words. I'm not sure I don't know. Yeah, maybe. But with khalas, this is the whole time. I gave him open-ended questions. I gave him closed-ended questions. And at the end, I had to play with him emoji games on his cell phone. I did everything I could. And in the end, the only success that I felt was, will you talk to me the next time? And he says, I guess. <laughs> so I'm very happy. <laughs> and this is not my kid. I'm just I'm just hired as a coach to coach that kid. So alhamdulillah for that. So I, I do not know what the situation is. My daughter won't talk when and she feels I won't listen or understand her. Yes, those feelings come from those feelings. Now these are the now these are some of the examples that I want to give before wrapping this up. Um, inshallah, ta'ala, I will go by quickly. You can always go back and watch the recording. Whoever is taking notes for whoever is taking notes. Number one, let's practice giving self empathy instead of saying. And this is for the parent themselves. Instead of saying, he is such a stubborn boy. How dare he act like this when I have done so much for him today? What we say is, when I see him looking into the other direction after I have asked him to come here, I feel helpless because I value cooperation and I feel sad because I value harmony. So what are, what are your values? You should know those values, right? Instead of the victim mindset, you should know what are you feeling so that you can tell that what you're feeling is okay and what are those feelings and not feel that this child is bad. Number two, and this is giving yourself self-empathy. In our heads, we need to give our, uh, ourselves self-empathy. Number two, when I remember, <clears throat> like for example, I just can't get her to do anything I'm, I say. I'm such an ineffective parent, right? Though so instead of saying that to yourself, you say, when I remember that she said she would do washing up and now I see that she is not doing it, I feel frustrated because I'm really needing support and exhausted because I need some rest. When you say this to yourself, trust me, you will be able to say this to your child too in conversations. Now, second step, offering empathy. Instead of saying, please be a good girl and help mommy put your clothes on, you can ask, are you feeling really frustrated because you want to choose when what you want to put on now uh, hold on here it's snow outside and the child wants to wear slippers sarah has given a very good example go back to the beginning of the thing okay uh, 
if you just sit there and don't join in, we are going home, right? Now, how do you offer empathy instead of instead of the command? How do you offer empathy? Are you feeling a bit nervous about playing with the others and wanting some help? Would you like me to come over there with you? Now, this is for younger children. I will give you an example. My son, uh, between the ages of uh, seven, eight, nine, ten, Allahu Akbar, wherever we used to go, if there was a uh, if there was an event, no, I don't want to go. I don't want to go. Why do I have to go? I don't want to go. I'm not going to go. I'm, I'm going to get so bored. The funny thing is, he knows who the people that we're going to be with, and he knows that his friends are going to be there. And the and and by the time we're supposed to come back, no, can we stay a bit more longer? I have so much fun. I can So before going, there's a nagging that I don't want to go, and before coming back, there's a nagging that I don't want to go back. So Alhamdulillah, that's a phase. Alhamdulillah, that phase has passed. But but these are natural things. How do you offer empathy? you if you if you are practicing and if you have patience you ask them those questions or like i used to do just ignore and put them in the car whichever works for you <laughs> uh or and uh, there's the third one the last one expressing ourselves using observations feelings and needs and requests so this example of nagging now it, it can be answered in here expressing ourselves using observations feelings needs and requests these are basically these are the things that's ha that are happening with our child right the needs requests, feelings and what are we doing we're observing instead of saying <clears throat> your room is so messy how can you live in this mess we can say when i see your clothes lying on the floor i feel jittery because i like cleanliness and then as muslims we say cleanliness is this iman it's good to be clean etc etc don't don't prolong with older children especially children ages eight nine up until again halas eight nine is the cut is the cut age you don't go beyond three four sentences when you are trying to put your point across because if you go beyond those three four sentences you've you've lost the child they're they're not listening to you now they're just it's just voice um so so instead you say that i value order or i value cleanliness would you be willing and then you put in the question you have to like as a parent somebody said how can i not put consequences you have to put consequences you have to put in that effort like and you ha and don't be scared don't be scared uh would you be willing to pick up your clothes and put them away by the end of the day today or can i help you to put your clothes away let's do this together if you need support you know anything that 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 shows empathy that shows compassion that shows observation and that can bring communication together uh, another one is Billy you should do your homework you know you will make your teacher angry if you don't instead of saying that instead of instigating fear in the child of the teacher and paralyzing the child even more especially if the child is anxiety prone what you say is when I see that you haven't done your homework yet I feel worried because I value learning would you be willing to tell me what you heard me say so ask them if they heard you ask them back like what am i saying does it make sense to you and of course you will know when the child will respond and sometimes you you praise children right and you praise them like this you're so patient and you're so well behaved i'm so proud of you nothing wrong in doing that but don't make it a habit instead what you need to say is when i remember that you paid played nicely at at the auntie's house i feel really grateful not proud i really feel i feel really grateful because i appreciate being kind and helping each other. I hope these were helpful. Jazakallah khair, sorry from my side. Jazakallah khair, Sister Irma, I do want to finish there as well. Um, I just want to point out one thing that Sister Iram said that I think that we should um, just emphasize, right? When you're parenting, you're not asking for them for any permission to do anything. But what we're doing is we are asking them to do certain things that are reasonable within a family to do. Right. So, um, again, uh, we do give a lot of examples and mashallah, we love talking. So if you guys need to go, please do <laughs> and just watch the recording afterwards. Um, but somebody said just another day, uh, I was on a large families forum and um, somebody was talking about uh, <clears throat> somebody was talking about chores and having to do chores in a large family and the fact that, you know, that. Uh, we can't expect our older children to look after the younger children or we can't expect our older children to do more chores because they didn't choose to be born in a large family, right? And that really irked me because I really thought, 
what do you mean, right? I'm not talking about whether you chose it or not. At the end of the day, this is where we are, mate. I need help. I've got, mashallah, you know, quite a few of you around me. Mashallah, I've got five of you. So I can't do everything by myself and I will need help. So in that way, we are expecting the help. It's not like, you know, um, forcing them. We're not forcing them. We're not shouting at them. We expect a certain level of help right? We expect that. I, I don't have to now when I leave, I don't have to say, hey guys, please don't fight. Please don't do this. Please don't do that. I'm going to go out. I'll be back in an hour. I don't need to do any of that because they know that they're, they're kind of, it's really weird, but I think some of you, if you use babysitters, you'll understand what I'm talking about. The babysitter will be like, they're perfect. They're so awesome kids. They're just in the, in that babysitting mode, they're absolutely fine. They'll be crazy for you, but you know, for somebody else, they'll be fine. And they say that when the parents are around, the kids play up. And that's not a bad thing because that's when they're comfortable with you, they're happy with you, and they're ready to show you the real them, right? They don't want to show the real them to anybody else, but they will show it to you. And finally, about the uh, talking and listening with the kids. Um, I apologize, I'm doing this really fast, but inshallah, hopefully it benefits somebody. But just the talking and the listening, you know, um, <laughs> my husband told me the other day that Hafsa was telling him something and he actually lost track of what she was saying. It was so complicated, this story that she was telling him about something that had happened on a game she was playing with her brothers. And he was just like, I don't know what she was saying, but I just kept nodding at her. I said, good job, well done, <laughs> that's it. That's all she wanted. She probably didn't even want a comment from you. She just wants to know that she was heard and she's only like almost mashallah five years old now but if you do that consistently through the years when it comes to those points where they feel like they need someone to talk to they know that they can talk to you because you have listened to their nonsense you've listened to their random you know dreams um one of my girls tells me all about her dreams and you know to try to like think and I keep trying to tell her there's nothing in it just relax you know right so in that way um if you put in that effort now when they from the age of zero to seven be their friend play with them you know enjoy their company get them to enjoy your company you will enjoy each other inshallah and then that will inshallah grow you know eight to fourteen and then so on inshallah inshallah and um sister reba probably gonna get mad at us today again because it's so long <laughs> but inshallah and uh, jazakallah khair, thank you so much for joining us please do follow us on parenting with Allah by my side your parenting tribe um we are there for you we've got a lovely ramadan challenge for the kids so they get to do 30 days of kindness and we've got lots of things going on sister as um uh, sabri has just shared the links for you you can follow us on facebook instagram youtube and um please do pm us dm us let us know how you're doing and inshallah I'll speak to you on thursday with our new topic inshallah jazakallah take care assalamu alaikum thank you so much sister sarah and sister Ram. we're very happy to have you here and we'll look forward to the next uh, session which is going to be on thursday right thursdays and sundays yeah. And to the moms, please don't forget we have the kids session today at seven. So make sure they show up. And yeah, we will wait for them there. And inshallah, we're going to have a lot of fun. And thank you for coming. And we'll look forward to seeing you there again. Take care. Jazakallah khair, sisters. Um, there was a, one question that we had from a sister, Uzma. We'll answer it after the live goes off. But it was in Urdu. Okay. Uh, no, we answered it. Sara, we answered it. She wrote it okay. and I answered it. It was about. All right. Inshallah. All right. Okay, that's fine. No All right. Assalamu alaikum. Take care, sisters. See you soon.